to our third and final session. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, sustainable tourism and the opportunities there, uh, and uh, perhaps there'll be some lessons for uh, this particular region. Um, uh, Amir and I were talking about some similarities and differences between uh, is Israel and Bulgaria, and I, I brought up governance, and I said, you know, perhaps Bulgaria has a bit more uh, uh, challenges with governance, and uh, Amir said, well, we've had, ha is it five elections in two years? Um, it was five elections, but uh, the sixth is very close. So okay. Uh, well, how many have we had in Bulgaria in the past two years? Also five, so we're, okay. we're both very close, right? Yeah. So, uh, yes, Jews are great at disagreeing, but uh, this region, uh, uh, this is what they call this is what they na they named the term balkanization after so mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll we'll see who wins we use these terms a lot by the way balkanization yeah. in israel uh, because we also think that it's maybe it's about time to uh, you know adapt the canton uh, system or something like mm. that because it's very hard to live with each other you know mm. in, in a very small country yeah uh, so, uh, my name is Ilya Levine, I'm uh, co-chair of the Department of Politics and European Studies. Uh, our guest there is Amir Shani, he's an associate professor in the Department of Hotel and Tourism Management at Ben Gurion University of the Negev, uh, where he researches and teaches courses in innovation and entrepreneurship, hospitality and tourism ethics, uh, marketing research and hotel and lodging management. Uh, his articles have appeared in a variety of leading tourism and hospitality journals, such as the Annals of Tourism Research. Uh, he's also contributed uh, chapters for edited books focusing on destination, marketing, zoos and tourism, uh, and quality of life in tourism. Uh, he's won a number of uh, academic awards, including the Toronto Prize for Excellence in Research, and he has a PhD from the Rosen College of Hospitality Management uh, at the uh, from the University of uh, Central Florida. It's too bad that my mother is not here to to listen. Oh, to yeah, <laughs> but it's never <laughs> enough. No matter what I say. Yeah. Uh, sh sh no, but you're doing it so so nicely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, but she'd still be like, okay, but why not, you know, <laughs> okay. what, what, my, my neighbor's son, he's a doctor, he's, he's a real doctor, he's a real doctor, real doctor. Not, not yeah, a real doctor, doctor unlike, yeah. unlike any of us, right? <laughs> he's a neurosurgeon, uh, yeah, uh, how do you do tourism research, how much of it is just you on holiday, and, we, and do you have openings? It's not necessarily, you don't have to practice what you teach in research, but uh, I would say that it's, um, it, it does, a v it is a very interesting uh, research area uh, to investigate uh, people having fun, right? Mm -hmm. Even though tourism is not always fun, as you might yeah. know in the Balkan area, right? There are also um, tourism sites that uh, were very tr tragic in the past. Uh, sites of wars, right? sometimes even genocide, that people are attracted to it as, as mm -hmm. tourists, which is kind of a, a little counterintuitive, right? Why do you spend your time and money to go to such places? But, but that's also tourism, not just uh, fun. New Zealanders, actually, a number of New Zealanders, they will travel uh, they will travel to sites where uh, New Zealanders fought and died during World War One. Okay, uh, that's 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 part of the culture, uh, especially Gallipoli in in Turkey, uh, which which was a military an absolute military disaster uh, f for our side. Uh, yeah. But it's become an important part of the national identity, and, and remembering that is kind of no, a big, big deal. We have also Australians and New Zealanders coming to uh, Beersheba. In Israel, where they fought against the Ottomans mm -hmm. in World War yeah. I. So yeah. uh, we do have also tourists from your area. Yeah. Uh, our other guest, uh, Admir, has already been introduced, but I'll just very quickly reintroduce uh, him. He's an economist. He's a lecturer at the Faculty of Economics uh, at the University of Tuzla. Uh, 
He co-wrote a book on Islam and the free market. That's a very interesting kind of overlap. But we've, we've, but we've kind of touched on the question of culture, culture and uh, business, culture and the economy, right? And religion, of course, has a big impact on culture. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you cannot actually uh, divide two. Like it's always uh, interconnecting. Like, yeah. And it's hard to say where religion stops and culture interferes and Absolutely. so on. And especially like if you put ethnicity in that formula, it's really complex. And of course, it's shaping everything. And even as Amir said, even tourism like can yeah. be shaped. Or or you mentioned the like New Zealand experience, which is really interesting. Like that you create your national identity based on one battle that happened before that was a disaster and now it's a touristical hotspot and so yeah, yeah. Uh, similar like in Bosnia where I come from like Ami mentioned the genocide like we have Srebrenica genocide memorial and actually the national identity of, of lots of people is based on that tragedy which is now like being being uh, always like uh, it was it's always a part of any touristic destination in Bosnia I thought this was going to be a really happy panel but <laughs> this, is, this is really bringing me down but uh, you started uh, it. <laughs> I did start it it's my fault uh, he, uh, he he also edited the Bosnian ed editions of Economics of Freedom and the Essential Hayek. That's the one by Donald Boudreau, right? Yeah, and uh, I translated the first edition of uh, Capitalism Freedom by Milton Friedman. Like that's I, I see that as biggest achievement as a classical liberal. Mm. Uh, we actually uh, were able like to give that uh, book to almost every student in the country, like to read and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you write uh, economic columns for the Dnevni Avaz, the most widely read newspaper in Bosnia-Herzegovina. You're the founder and director of Malti, uh, a libertarian association, and you're also now a member of parliament. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see for how long. I think you might be getting fired after uh, no, some of your comments like, are reported. Like I have my immunity, you know, like so for four years. Like uh, okay. I, even if I... I'm going to suppose to, for some reason, go to jail, you know, for, for six months before, like the, the, if the sentence is six months or so on, parliament needs to vote on that. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so, so I hope so, you get along so with your Bosnia colleagues. For four years until the next uh, election? Yeah, and we don't have regular, like in Bulgaria, we don't have regular, uh, you know, elections. Okay. There, it's only yeah, like four. I, I was four. about to say that is in Israel and Bulgaria, it was three months. So yeah, no, no. We are like, you, which is good for You are for very this. lucky. You're mm -hmm. safe, like, for four years. Like. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, there's a Simpsons episode where they legalize gambling in uh, Springfield, and Mr. Burns builds a casino. And he notes that it's basically the perfect business because people come in, they give them their money, and then they leave. And I was thinking, tourism is a lot like that. People show up, they give you their money, then they leave. And in addition to that, they post photos and videos on social media showing your country in the best possible light, often a little bit better than it actually is. Uh, so let, let's, uh, could you perhaps get us started, uh, okay. Amir? Well, that's unless, of course, they have a bad experience and then they can... Uh, mm -hmm. They can create very bad publicity about your country, and, and it's a, and, and it it can be a disaster. Um, because uh, tourism is an as an holist, is a holistic experience, right? You don't think about your tur tourism experience in a certain destination in a separate separate ways, right? The taxi that drove me to from the airport was great, but the hotel was mediocre. Right after that, this site was like that. Then this restaurant was like. Usually, remember your your experience in a holistic way, and which 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 can be good for a destination. But of course, if if one of the elements right breaks down, then the whole destination can be damaged. And the, the rep reputation of all the destination can be damaged. Um, the title of this session is about is is about sustainable tourism, and I think it's important. Uh, to start maybe with understanding what sustainability is, or what sustainable, sustainable tourism means. Uh, what do you think that sustainable tourism means? Any idea when you think about sustainable tourism? It sounds good, right? It sounds <laughs> something positive, <laughs> something that we need to thrive. Uh, yeah. At the back there? Uh, sustainable tourism, maybe tourism with things which you go to a place and you're able to Okay. 
אוקיי, okay, so, so it, it needs to be positive, right? The, the formal, formal definition is, is to, of sustainable tourism is tourism that uh, meets the needs of the current generation, right? Without compromising the, the, the needs of, uh, next, of the next generations, right? Or their, or their ability to meet their own needs. And it's, it's very similar to what you said. And I think that I agree with this uh, definition, but I think that there is a misconception about it. Sometimes when we think about ecotourism, uh, sustainable tourism or other related terms like ecotourism, green tourism, people think about uh, tourism as uh, something that needs to stay constant or leave the area exactly the same way, right, for, for generations. Um, which I think is a misconception. Because it, there is no way that you can sustain the area the exact the same way for, for years or generations, right? Uh, to, to, to keep it uh, stagnant, right? Without any major development, without any major uh, changes in the neighborhoods or in the, in the local population, that's, that's impossible. And I think it's, it's not, it's, uh, also go against the concept of progress, right? So I think that... Sustainable tourism does, does not contradict progress or does not co uh, contradict growth. Yes, so we need to do it. I, and, and I prefer the term responsible tourism over sustainable tourism because responsible tourism, right, means that you need to do it consciously, the, the actions, you need to develop smart tourism, you need to um, harness the uh, free market uh, for, for, for tourism development. But you need to do it responsibly in a way that you keep uh, ecological sustainability, economical sustainability, local and cultural sustainability, right? For the benefits also of the local, of the local population. Um, so I think this is, this is um, the, fir the first uh, misconception that we need to, 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 to clarify, that the, uh, progress, growth, and sustainable tourism do not contradict uh, each other. And I think it's also, it's very important uh, to, to mention it in, in this uh, sense. Um, so um, what are the major challenges of uh, sustainable tourism, of developing sustainable tourism in the Balkan area? What are the main issues here that, uh, you know, Admir? Of, uh, that you think of? What do you think? Uh, like, as a person from Balkan, and Amir is really expert here, uh, I would maybe say lack of infrastructure, like okay. basic infrastructure that can, you know, be backbone for that tourism. And it's definitely a major issue because it's very costly, right, to build uh, infrastructures. Yes. It's uh, required high taxes, right, mm -hmm. big, 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 ex big expenses, and it's uh, and it's a ma major issues. And I, gr I agree that it's. Uh, one of the major issues of the Balkan. What else do you think of? Um, yeah. oh. The fact that they, like, we, as you mentioned, we don't have permanent governments, or even if we do, we don't really uh, follow strategies. Like, you set okay. up a strategy for 15 years, but then two years later, someone will rewrite it. So it's political instability. That, um, that, uh, both political, but maybe even when it comes to the business owners. The okay. fact that they don't have the mindset of, let's build for the future and have a long-lasting impact rather than let's Excellent. Uh, make the budget for today and then tomorrow will be Excellent. Impact. Yeah, when uh, business owners, right, or, be, or tourism developer, developers do not trust, right, the future, they do not know what to expect, mm -hmm. uh, when they have a constant uh, change, uh, regulation changing, right, and, and every, everything uh, is, is very unclear, right, it's very hard to build a sustainable, right, or responsible tourism industry. Uh, other issues? Yeah. I don't know if I'd call it an issue, but uh, maybe how tourism uh, could be framed here in Bulgaria. Uh, so, for example, uh, people, other European citizens, uh, they know that it's a little bit cheaper than their country, and it's called alcohol and party tourism during the summertime, or on a good side during the wintertime, uh, ski tourism. Mm -hmm. So, I think maybe maybe part of it can be framing of uh, what motivates 
outside citizens or outside uh, tourists uh, to come here. Okay. Good. Very good. Um, other issues that also happening in the Balkan, and other issues, uh, other issues of sustainable tourism that is uh, that are very important and discussed, uh, is for example the over tourism issue. You heard about the term over tourism? You usually hear, uh, we usually hear it right in the context of Barcelona and the major or other major uh, European cities, but it's also uh, this problem exists also in the Balkan. Right, for example, in Dubrov Dubrovnik, right? Have, have you been there? Yeah, I heard that it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful yes, place. And it, right, and it's over tourist. Yeah, you so, <laughs> so you agree that yeah. you agree with yeah. the literature that it's uh, suffering from over tourism. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I, I had a mistake going there by car because it's close to Bosnia, so you you just okay. cannot park it. Like, <laughs> so that's why they're using airplanes and so on. Okay, and other uh, places of over, over tourism, maybe in the Balkans. Maybe Montenegro, Kotor Bay, right? That they have the same issues as Dubrovnik, that they're getting a, a mass uh, cruises, right? Ships and lots of Russians, London. lots of Russians. <laughs> what, Russians? Yeah, they're okay. in Montenegro because they're not in EU. But okay, I, would, I understand. I would, uh, Istanbul. Istanbul, Istanbul yeah. 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 Okay, great. I think that we raised a very interesting issue. Now the, now the questions, right, is how, how to solve these issues, how to develop sustainable tourism in light of these in, in, uh, uh, specific characteristics, right, of tourism in the Balkans. And uh, I think here we have two main approaches, or two main, uh, main strategies, right? One strategy is uh, government-led policy and planning, or political environmentalism, right? This is the classical, I think, the most common approach right to, to the issue that you mentioned if there is over tourism what can we do limit the number of tourism for example right raise the taxes on uh, on the tourism activities right and, and and so forth we can solve it by governmental action um, if we have bad inf infrastructure right so we we'll raise the raise taxes right and try to build it or uh, Whatever, uh, whatever the government that, right, usually yeah, does. Credit. Right. So um, this political environmentalism usually is the way that we think, think of when we think about these issues of sustainability right, and environment, environmental and social problems. We think that we must have the government to, to save us because we cannot rely on the free market, right, on, on business owners uh, to deal with the environment. It's too... It's too delicate, right, or, or too sensitive. However, we also know that the government is also not great on uh, managing, right, uh, tourism and uh, environmental resources. For example, regarding national um, parks, what kind of uh, problems usually uh, we can see in government-run uh, uh, national park? So you mean that there was a, it was badly managed park, so everybody could do whatever they want to? There is a national park in Bulgaria, the Rio National Park. You know Bear Grylls. Uh, he was in this park. Mm -hmm. He was there camping. Uh, it is strictly forbidden to enter the lakes for whatever purpose. But uh, he was uh, taking a bath in the lakes. <laughs> he was catching and other animals, he also uh, set up a fire mm -hmm. and uh, no one talk, no one un even understood about this. What was that, when that happened, like, Burgers? A few years ago. Was it a public shame, uh, like? He was, uh, uh, he was fined for this, but only after uh, they saw it on TV in his uh, show. So, this is how a government Okay. Okay. Um, in continuation with what you said, I think that one of the major problems of national parks is that they are boring. Uh, let, let's 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 uh, 
Yes, let's uh, say it plain and simple. Why is it boring? Or why is it not to attract as many people as we wanted to or uh, serve their needs and wants? Well, because it's not my, because it's not market led, right? Because it does not exist to serve the needs of the customers, of the citizens of the country. It exists to serve political problem, political issues, right? Uh, to fill up uh, positions, yeah. right? Go- governmental positions, and, and and so and so forth, and so and uh, things like that. Um, so. We see that we have also a lot of problems with regard to a political environmentalism, or as we said, government-led mark, a, a policy and planning with regard to tourism. So another approach, or alternative approach, which sounds very peculiar to us, or very strange to us, is the free market environmentalism approach, or a market-led policy and planning. And we, which means that we rely on market forces to uh, conserve and sustain our natural resources. Yeah? For example, what, we, what can we do in, with regard to national parks? We can privatize them, right? We can use a, a, a personal tourism contract, co- contractors to develop interesting right, and, and attractive activities in these commercial parks. Commercial use, commercial right. advertising. So they can yeah. attract, right, and serve our needs much better. You don't like this idea, I can see. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Most people don't like it. Most people don't like an, anything that libertarians, right, they say. Mm-hmm. So it's, we are used to it. <laughs> but uh, I, we, we can see that in the places that it was implemented, in places that people uh, were granted land uh, rights, Right and property rights over over lands, the free market does much better work in preserving and in creating and um, exciting ecotourism activities and ecotourism industry than the government can do because the government does not know how to uh, satisfy the needs of customers. It's not their business. Right? The business is uh, their, their business is completely different, right? And uh, they're not doing it. Uh, and anyway, so good. Uh, who, who gets it right? I mean, are there uh, r- real-world examples of national Absolutely. parks being handed over to uh, private investors and them not just cutting everything down and uh, uh, paving everything with concrete and, and setting up casinos everywhere? Absolutely. Um, the, 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 the main interest of uh, private owners usually is to uh, preserve their property. First of, first of all, think about let's think about our property, right? When we are when it's when we are dealing with our own property, right? Our own personal equipment or whatever, or, or a house or whatever, we take good care of it. That's our uh, the, the basic um, human right intuition is to preserve what we have, and we and when something like national park or, or not nature reserve or, or other um, natural resources do not belong to a specific entity or to a specific organization or a landowner or whatever, then it belongs to everybody. And what happens when everybody owns a resource? Nobody owns it. No, no, Nobody no. cares, right? Tragedy of the commons. We call yeah. it, right, the tragedy of the commons, that uh, um, free use of uh, limited resources, right, will, cre- will, will eventually will create a destruction to these resources. So we can see, for example, in Africa, when we gave local tribes, the, when the, the governments gave local tribes the rights to, to run their lands as they see fit, they usually do not create casinos or destroy the, the trees or, or stuff like that. What, what did they do? They contact ecotourism op- operators, right? And they, they're really, really taking care of of their uh, territories because they profit from it. And when you profit from it, you have the incentives to preserve it. The United States also, uh, although we, we, are, we are used to think about the United States as having very strict national park system, right, that, you can, that it's federally ran and you cannot do anything with it, 
Actually, in the United States, you have vast areas that are run by private organizations, like Nature Conservancy, uh, Natural Resource Management, st uh, organization that belong to people like you and me, that care about the environment, that want, want to preserve the environment, want to preserve uh, the natural resources of the beautiful of this beautiful country and and they get together right and they buy lands and they buy lands and preserve it and have uh, ecotourism activities they sell the rights to hunt to fish to uh, operate camp campgrounds or whatever people really want to do in nature and not just you know preserve it or run it uh, for the sake of it so I hope that uh, I provided some examples. And, and we have, like, uh, regarding what Amir said, like, over, over tourism, we have a natural market force. It's called overpricing. So let me go back on Dubrovnik. Like, they have a stratum, like, famous coffee. It's 10 euros, like, for a small espresso. Mm -hmm. So I think that the market, it's like the, 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 the greed of, of those owners and so on, it's like naturally working to distract you as a tourist to get over tourism to some historical parts and so on because the prices are being raised. I think in Barcelona they're doing the, the same regarding the renting of apartments and so on. That has a limit, but it's slowing the trend because in alternative, like you will have really have too much crowds on one spot, which is which is not the end goal of, of, of that activity. Okay, so let's think about another issue that uh, we raised here, uh, the, uh, the cruise issue, right? Um, that is really perceived to be unsustainable, not just because of the ecological impact on a very certain uh, piece of land, but also because the conception is that the local people do not profit or do not benefit right, from, from the cruise industry. Why? Where, where do these uh, travelers sleep? Cruise. On the cruise, on the ship, so, right, no accommodation, right, no stuff like that. They usually also eat, right, they eat like eight or nine uh, meals a day on the ship, right? I don't know if you've ever been in a cruise, but it's, uh, it's that's, the, that's the issue here. And, uh, but they do, la they do, right, uh, when, when they come to a shore, uh, to uh, Dubrovnik or, uh, or Qatar uh, Bay, so what do they do there? Usually they stay there for a very short period of time, right? Usually, I don't know, eat pizza on the, shore, on the coast, right? Or do some, some very simple activities and they, they go back to the, uh, to the ship. So how can the free market solve this issue? If we let these uh, cruises, you know, go on without limitation, how can the, wh what do you think? How can we create or uh, create the, si the situation or the conditions for the free market to solve this issue, which is a big issue in certain area? Yeah, sure. Maybe, I don't know if it'd be under free market, but maybe uh, have some kind of license or some kind of rent, let's say, to uh, dock in a certain port. Okay. So, so somehow if somebody comes through to disturb, you can still get some kind of investment to maybe fix up or improve uh, what's around that area. Okay, that can be a solution, I, th I think, or, or part of the solution, I think, but it's not a, a, a solution in a, with regard to the tourism industry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is this. Tourists really want to see the authentic countries and territories that they arrive to. But they usually don't do it. Why do they don't do it? Because they don't, sometimes, usually they don't have options to do it. Right? It's very hard to develop biz, uh, tourism businesses. It's very hard to, we, we said it before, right? To, the national parks, right, and other territories are just not attractive enough to get these people and uh, leave the ship, right, and go for the entire day, right, to explore the, the inland. So the things to do it, I think, and the, the way that the free market environmentalism will do it, right, is to encourage local entrepreneurs to develop exciting activities around, around the island or whatever they, wherever they go to. 
And that means also, right, to give up some of the, uh, all of the government regarding to these territories and, the, and, this, uh, and this nature reserve, right, and create exciting uh, tourism activities. Another way to do it is to encourage and allow people to develop hospitality facilities, sometimes right in their own home. People nowadays are not crazy about the institutionalized tourism industry. To go, to stay in the same places, right? Everybody stay in the same hotel, everybody stay, eat in the same restaurant. They want to get to know the local life. And how can we encourage it? I think it can be very easily, right? By allowing home-based commercial hospitality that people can host in their own home, allow you to have a meal with them, to, to get to know the family, uh, I would love, by the way, to uh, to get a really Bulgarian uh, meal, you know, in a Bulgarian uh, family. Uh, it's exciting to 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 get to know the the the, the real life here in uh, in Bulgaria. How it's like to gossip about politics, right? We can bitch about our politician together. We can, uh, it will be a lot of fun. And it's much more meaningful experience for tourism than just, you know, to, to do the same thing that we, we usually do, go around the promenade, right, or whatever, and look, and look at things and, 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 and come back. But in that way, we do need the government understanding, right, that to give up a little bit, to, to allow people not just uh, to operate businesses in, a, in regarding to zoning, we, we're in the business uh, area, right, or the tourism area, but no. To allow real urban tourism be developed, and so it can create, right, and it also can, can uh, very easy uh, the congestion, congestion in, this, uh, in the shore, right, to allow people to, to travel, to see uh, the real, uh, real life in, a, in a real neighborhoods and not just staying as a in the tourism area. Yeah, well, I think uh, I spoke too much. Funny sh well, my story there. Uh, so my country has only 20 kilometers of sea access on the Adriatic Sea, and we are actually cutting uh, Croatia in half with that. It's only one city. And because of that, uh, Bosnia doesn't have a ministry of sea. You know, it's w just one city on sea, so we don't have a ministry of sea. And uh, you have endangered species of fish like that you cannot eat in EU and you cannot eat them certainly in Croatia but like crews sometimes stop in this city of Neum in Bosnia and Herzegovina just like to eat that fish that's in the endangered species you know <laughs> but because we don't have administration we don't have government you know that's taking care of that fish you can eat them like in one part like of the Adriatic Sea that's in Bosnia you cannot eat them in Croatia and Serbia is so that is it that that good so the fish no, it's not like yeah. it's, it's just people like forbidden fruit, you know, <laughs> like the, the, the fish is not something like, yeah. like people say I, I didn't eat it like I'm not, I'm not in that. Uh, but like people say it's not something special, but still they want to take a picture. And so on. so these guys develop tourism based on, on that, like one one flow of, of legal uh, administration and so on. <laughs> uh, let's perhaps take a question. Uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, yeah. So I want to ask in particular because in Bulgaria, in particular my local hometown, Leningrad, you may know it from this big karst lake, the Puzo. Uh, when when it comes to the biggest draws in terms of tourism currently are luxurious four to five star hotels. Mm -hmm. And they are designed to draw you in and to make you stay either that hotel and not leave the city. All inclusive resort. Yeah. yeah. All inclusive resorts, which are maybe go for there because there's like a lot of money invested. In there. There's more money invested in some of the hotels that we didn't see in Chicago, for example. It's really deep. And my question was that is this considered to be a norm? Because from what I can see, these hotels are gonna be something very big for five, ten, twenty years, but eventually they're going to be outdated. And there will be some other 
the people will go to someplace else. And what happens is that these resorts take all the income from the tourists for themselves with the private tourism companies, and the municipality doesn't get to fund it, almost anything, it doesn't get any of the funding, which means that the town's infrastructure gets regressed. And speaking of that famous Lake Kertuza I talk about, this is it's all my municipality. Well, it's not funded at all. It's almost not clean, and throughout the site there are at least all buildings that are considered graveyards. In graveyard buildings, they get abandoned, almost destroyed, in a sense, because the whole municipality doesn't get any of the funding from these hotels and resorts because the tax, the privatized tax, these hotels have to pay to the municipality is something like 1,000 yen or something, which is nothing. What happens is that there will be that the hotels are taking all the income, they take all the resources, they take all the, the human resources, which are just not seen like half the town. And in, in return, they try, they are sustainable, but nothing else is. And I think this is a precedent that happens throughout a lot of cities in Bulgaria, maybe not the Balkan nation. So, so what will be the the uh, government-led uh, policy to, to tackle this uh, all-inclusive resort and their effects on the community? Honestly, I cannot think of a government-led policy, but I could think of... For example, you can prohibit, right? To, you can ban the, the service of lunch in this area, right? In the, right? To, to force the tourists, right, to go to have lunch or to visit other local restaurants. For example, yeah. that that's a government-led policy in planning. I'm I'm not uh, in favor of it, yeah. <laughs> but that will be the government idea. Yeah. But but uh, but uh, I would like to start by saying that nobody keeps these uh, tourists, you know, by force in these uh, resorts. They they do it because these resorts provide them, you know, um, much better uh, services, according to their perceptions, yeah. to the perception of the of the customers. So. So it's not like you know they're holding them, they don't let them outside the and go and go around the town, right? This is this is this is what we call a free choice of, of tourists. In order in order to spread the wealth or to spread the tourism benefits around the town, uh, we need to think about right a, a, a good uh, quality services that we can offer, maybe innovate innovative services that you, we can convince these tourists right to get out of these resorts. And also experience experience town, and I think that the market can do it right, much better than you know some other uh, regulation and stuff like that. For example, you mentioned the lake, mm -hmm. that is in, in a very bad bad shape. I, I would not recommend to go there. It's, you go in, there's some shops, but it's very dirty. Absolutely, and, and I'm sure that if I look into it, I will find that it's very hard to get, you know, permission to develop this area, or to you, or to use this lake to, for a private initiatives regarding tourism. Believe me, there are contractors that will love to take this area under the wings, develop it, and profit from it, and then you will see the tourists come from the resorts uh, to, to visit town, and then. Uh, spreading the tourism uh, dollars much evenly, right, and much uh, f fairer. I think resorts are boring, and I think that most tourists think it's boring, but it really gives them, you know, a value for money, very good value for money. You get very cheap food, very, you know, you, got every, you, you get everything there. Um, the, way to, the way to think, right, the way to tackle it or to deal with it is through entrepreneurship and innovation, right, and not government-led uh, policy and planning. That's uh, my perspective. Yes, that's also, I want to mention the same sure. thing, because it's governmental. I don't think the government can, government or the municipality, as in their current state, can solve this particular issue. But there's a lot of non-government organizations that, Absolutely. especially that they love, like this particular resort and many others in Bulgaria, for example, that they could do a bit with their aggressive marketing and showcase events that happen around town so they can draw some of the tourists that would love to stay in the, stay in the resorts to do activities in the town. The municipality then recuperates some of the profits and then they would be able to 
rebuilt some of the attraction that made the attraction that made the original city or town like attractive to begin with. And speaking of in independent contractors, what's currently happening with, with this lake is that the municipality is looking to offer a contract that will eventually privatize the entire sector. So there will be a private owner that will be able to rebuild it on its own without the help of the municipality mm -hmm. as they're currently not able to find a government-led solution to the entire yeah. sector, which is which for me is a bit of a shame because this lake belongs to the people. In a way from isolated experiences, I believe that private contractors are very well equipped in making something particular, something individual, a gem that a lot of people will be able to visit regardless, even if the municipality will probably not be able to profit from it afterwards. Okay. I think that publicly owned or belong to the people, it's, it's, it, it sounds nice, but I think what, that it will eventually lead is to the tragedy of the commons. And I think that we, maybe we need to grow up a little bit and understand, you know, that uh, maybe, maybe it's good, you know, that certain people or organization will, that, that you have somebody, you know, that is responsible for the area, that has um, invested in this area. So, so he has also the, the right incentives to, to, to keep it clean. Yeah, you might need to pay fees uh, to enter this area, right, or to participate in certain activities. And some people don't like it. It belongs to the people, the beach, right? Why should I pay uh, entrance fees to the beach or to the natural area or to the nature reserve? But uh, again, it's not a perfect world, right? We, I, and, and, and I think that free market environmentalism uh, will work much better than uh, the, the political one. Um, I think it was in uh, one of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books that there was a... One of my favorites. There was a there was a there was a planet uh, that was very very serious about sustainable tourism. So uh, visitors to the planet would be weighed before they w when they land, and then they would be weighed when they leave. And if they were trying to leave weighing more than their body did when they landed, uh, <laughs> parts of them were going to be surgically removed and kept on the planet, right? Just so that you don't take anything off the planet. Yeah. Uh, perhaps not the, the best the sustainability strategy. in its best, right? Uh, Sustain. But yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, fascinating uh, insights and some interesting directions uh, the region and other areas could take. It was good to hear uh, actual examples of uh, in innovations that have been tried. Uh, I, now I, I really want to see the, the Balkans, you know, the real Balkans now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to, not just the... To, uh, Absolutely. No, it's beautiful. It's, so it's a beautiful yeah, region. Yeah, it it's is. A beautiful region. With, with fantastic uh, tourism potential. Yeah, yeah. Um, and fantastic people, by the way. That, that uh, are very hospitable and very, you know, has a lot to, to, to give to, to the tourists, I think. And to, uh, to provide you know, them authentic experiences. Uh, Re Rila National Park, I've been there, it's beautiful. I saw this, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Rila Lakes. Uh, there was no naked bear grills in the lakes at the time. I think that helps. Uh, but, but yeah, I would, I would recommend it. I hope you come back. Uh, we'll I hope you come back to the Balkans. We'll, we'll be happy to, to host you. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, please join us outside for a few more snacks and continue the uh, conversation and ask any questions. Uh, uh, that you've got off that you haven't been able to answer to, to ask so far. Good.